How do you invest in real estate after you graduate college? For good or bad, I decided recently to post my cell phone on the internet and the number's literally right here on the screen, 385-217-3477. And I get people texting me all sorts of interesting questions. Sometimes they wanna know how to make money in real estate, they wanna know what career path they should pursue. But this week, Forrest reached out and he asked, how do I actually invest in real estate now that I'm a graduate? And today, I'm gonna to answer that question for us. One, one shot, now the future is yours, go! Forrest, thank you for the question. By the way, any of you can text me and ask me your questions as well, but let's drill down. This was his technical question. He says, I'm not sure if I should buy a house as soon as I graduate, or should I actually go home and live with my parents for a year or so? Before Forrest, I can give you that answer. I think we gotta look at what your generation is up to right now. And by your generation, I'm really talking about Gen Z. It's a really young generation. They're just coming online as adults and they have some very different ideas. I mean, when the millennials hit, I mean, we were like, you guys are so crazy and so different than the prior generation, but I think Gen Z might take the cake for doing it even more differently. Except I'm calling this the turnaround generation because our millennials are financially way worse off than baby boomers by a factor of fivefold by the age of 40. They literally have five times less money. Gen Z seems to be learning something from millennials and actually they're starting to think a little bit differently. Currently they make up 4% of the home buyer's market and yet 30% of Gen Z is able to go directly from their parents' home to a home of their own. And that's because they're doing something a little bit different. 53% of Gen Z are working a side hustle to help with earnings and savings. And so basically, instead of saying, well, I could live on my own and that will increase my expenses, maybe it's strategic to live at home and actually skip out on paying rent, but then actually hustle and work hard. I got my job, my career, my side hustle, and I'm gonna save like crazy. And when you stack up Gen Z next to millennials, guess who's actually owning real estate sooner? It's not millennials. Now this might be a little confusing, like Gen Z, why would you choose to move in with your parents to save money? Like, what's the point? You're college grads, like, like aren't you ready to start that job, make all that extra money? Dude, check this one out. New college grads are overestimating their starting salaries by $30,000. So in Utah, for example, the average college graduate starting salary, $37,000 they are delusionally thinking that they're actually going to get paid $67,000. And then it's like this rude awakening, like, oh my gosh, I spent all this money on college. Like I thought I was going to get like, I don't know, like a, a shortcut, more money right out of the gate. And it's actually not proving to be true, which means we got a semi delusional generation. But on the other hand, we've got Gen Zers that are like, okay, like let's live at home. Let's save the money. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into a house sooner than the millennials. And for us, I gotta say thank you because your question is really about thinking ahead. It's about investing. Most people are not thinking that way, so good on you. So let's pause and reflect on the cost for young people, like under the age of 25, because if you graduate and in Utah, you're starting with $37,000 a year, well, depending on what your expenses are, you might not have a lot left over for savings, which means you might need a, a more aggressive saving strategy. Check it out. Americans under 25 years old spend the least with the average monthly expenses in 2022 coming out to $3,863. If I go ahead and take that $3,863 and I multiply that by 12, that's $46,000 a year. Remember that Utah starting salary at 37,000? I mean, a little bit of a lower cost of living until real estate prices really bumped up. There are other places that you might be able to move in the country and maybe your starting salary is closer to 40 or 50, but the average person under the age of 25 has expenses of $46,000 a year. That's kind of part of why 62% of the nation is living check to check. The average national rent price, however, in the United States is $1,372, according to August 2023 rental market data from apartment list. So I want you to think about that. If you live at home, you stand to save an average of $1,372 a month, or in other words, $16,000 a year. That represents 30% of your expenses. So. I don't know, as long as mom and dad are cool with it, having that extra time to live at home might actually be a wise move. Now, I just wanna pause for a moment and reflect on what I was doing when I was in college because most people, they were in college, they were going into debt, and basically they were focusing on the degree that they wanted to support their future. I actually went to college thinking I was gonna be a doctor and after taking organic chemistry twice and getting a lower grade, a C minus on the second go around, my advisor pulled me aside and said, bro, he didn't say it that way. It's this old dude in like, you know, pleats and tucked in shirt. And he's like, Chris, 
you're never going to make it into medical school. It's like 10 years of, of chemistry, you're gonna hate it. And he was right. I'm actually glad that I ditched it. But instead of looking for another degree, I did something different. I just said, okay, this job will pay me 80,000 a year. This job will pay me 30,000 a year. This job will pay me $37,000 a year. And I started realizing that college was more about vocational training. It's not higher education, it's more career education. Like this is where you go to see if you can get a better job than someone that doesn't go to college, which by the way is not as true anymore as it used to be. And that's when I started realizing, okay, so people maybe make 50 to 100,000 ish dollar a year, they're in this bracket. And I started realizing that that was never gonna get me where I wanted to go. And so I had to go outside the walls of university and I found three mentors that year that each made over $10 million plus in real estate investing. And I didn't really understand what that word meant, but what I did know is that $10 million was a lot more money than 37 freaking thousand dollars a year. And so I basically said, okay, while I'm in college, I'm also gonna get a secondhand education from these guys. And their education was in finance, it was in well-being, it was in success, it was in mindset, it was in personal growth. Nothing that I was really getting from college. And it's strange, when I graduated college, I, I had a degree, I had a BS, <laughs> you know what that stands for. And I also had, a, I had an MBA. It was a massive bank account right? Like not the degree MBA, I'm being cute. An MBA, a massive bank account, because I had 25 homes that were paying me 12,000 residual dollars every single month. And so when I looked at my two degrees, one of them was like, okay, like this was expensive and I got to learn how to make money for other people. This one was actually cheap, but made me a lot more money and taught me how to work for myself. And between the two, that was my right path in life. I'm not saying that that's your path, but I like forest where your head's at, which is, hey, I wanna save because I wanna get into a house and that's one of the first smartest decisions you'll ever make in your life. The second smartest decision that you'll ever make is buying a second house. And the third financially smartest decision you'll ever make is to buy your 10th house. Because you'll realize that the retirement stats show that when you get to retirement, newsflash, in your retirement accounts from 401ks and IRAs, you have 256 grand. You'll have more net worth than that in just the equity of one home. And it's in that moment that you'll think to yourself, why didn't I buy 10? Because then I'd be worth millions of dollars instead of just having a little bit of money over here. I'd have a residual income from all my real estate rented out, property managers taking care of it all, of it totally passive for me. That's the education that I learned while I was in college. And if you haven't received that one, pay attention, here's what's next. You gotta put your money where it can grow. Saving your money in places like a high yield savings account or a CD is gonna get you what? A couple of points, three, four. Like in this weird economy that we're in with high interest rates, you can actually get four or 5%, but the moment rates come down like they've already started, that's gonna go away. Like CDs might get you one or 2%. Inflation is like three or four or 5%, so it's all washed out, it doesn't matter. You can put your money into something earning you a 5% APY, and it's not gonna make you rich. You could put your money 6% in a 401k or an IRA. You could put your money on the 30 year average on the S&P at 8%. Your blended average on retirement is gonna be 6%. So this kind of stuff, it's okay for saving short term for a down payment, but as soon as you have enough for that down payment, you're gonna pull it out of these 5% accounts and you're gonna put it as a down payment on the property that you're gonna buy. All right, now the exciting part. I need you to understand that when you graduate with your degree, if you go into a field of that degree, the bank is gonna say that you're four years in college, as long as it was two or more years and you got your degree, they're gonna count that as two years of work history, which means that you could literally go from saving money in your parents' home right into a home, or if you need to be there for a little bit and work that job, just know that you've got job history from having been in college as long as your career is in that same vein that you got the degree. All right, we've talked about saving money. Now let's actually talk about investing. Let's talk about getting in that first house. And by the way, if you want a very specific step-by-step -step guide of how to get into real estate the way that I did, which by the way was with less than $5,000 and then building a multi-million dollar portfolio, I wrote a book called The Straight Path to Real Estate Wealth. There's a link below. I always have a limited number of copies at a time that are free. If I have some right now, click that link and grab a copy because it is pretty much written for anybody, but especially the college kid, whether you're still in college or graduating, saying, hey, if you're starting with nothing step-by-step, step, this is literally how you invest in real estate. So click the link, grab a copy, that will give you the extensive and exhaustive guide of how you do it. Now, back to purchasing the property. The average first-time home buyer pays about 6% of the home price for their down payment. There are programs out there where you can do 3.5%, you can do 5%. When people pay 6%, it's not that the bank's mandating it, it's that they're trying to actually put 
more down and lower their mortgage. The median home sales price, by the way, in the United States currently, meaning all 50 states, when you're like, what is the median? It's $431,000 as of the third quarter of 2023. So if you need 6%, that's 25,860 bucks. If you're doing the three and a half percent down payment, it's gonna be closer to like 13 or $14,000. For a $300,000 home, then you would need $18,000 and that might just be a year and a half of savings. Remember, we talked about the average monthly rent that people pay a month, that's like 1,300 bucks. That's $14,000 a year that you can save if you're living with mom and dad. And frankly, if you're doing a three and a half percent down payment on $300,000, now we're talking about like 10 or $11,000 to get in. So a year of living at home, if it gives you that down payment, I would rather live at home and boom, I'm, I'm ready to do that. Now in the future, because you purchase below the median, your home has a lot more room to grow in value. You see, there's a lot of people that they buy too much house. They buy like a, a $500,000 house and later they're like, oh, my lifestyle, you know, I got a promotion. I'm going to now buy a $700,000 house. And what they're doing is they're, they're doing that Parkinson's law thing where the money that you make and the money that you spend is basically equal to each other. That's called bondage. That's called, I'm not getting ahead. That's called financially, my life sucks. And we have people to think like Dave Ramsey, they're like, hey, spend less than you make. I'm saying the same thing, but different than Dave. Don't, don't squander it in savings earning 0.0 nothing percent. You need to invest it. More homes, more better, right? That is why you're a subscriber on my channel. By the way, if you can save that money for down payment on that first house, and then before you establish roots, like a year later, have saved enough money to move and do it again, well, now you got a second home with a three and a half percent down payment. I know people that will do this a few times. It's called house hacking. It's like, shoot, when, when I graduate and put on my big boy underpants to become an investor, I got to put 20% down. 20% down might be like, like 50 or 70 or $80,000, but three and a half percent might be literally 10 grand. Uh, my wife and I, we did that for our first couple of homes. And it meant that the equity in those homes, oh my gosh, that's what put us on our path to financial freedom. It was getting into real estate early. Forest. Are we answering that question? Well, if you guys want to learn more about my process, if you want to learn more about the five steps of how to start from a starving college kid to building a multi-million dollar portfolio, I've outlined all of it in my book, The Straight Path to Real Estate Wealth. Click the link below and let's go ahead and get you a free copy of that. And if you're like, Chris, can I just talk to you? Text me. 385-217-3477. You never know if your question might be the premise of my next YouTube video. Oops, I made a mistake, Chris. Like right now, the money that I make and the money going out the door is kind of equal. So I don't know if I'm in a position to save like 10 or $15,000 a year. And I'd say, cool, then you need something different, my friend. You need a side hustle. And I happen to have a favorite side hustle. I like to call it digital real estate. It doesn't require $10,000 to get in the game. It doesn't require $5,000. It might only require a couple hundred bucks. So if you'd like to take a couple hundred dollars and turn it into thousands of dollars a month, or maybe even replace that career with just working from home a couple hours a day, there is a very real way to do that. It's called digital real estate. And if you want to learn more about it, click right here. Let's get you rolling.